Okay, so tree magic. Uh, tree magic. Ovates. Ovate. Yes. The druids were definitely known for their reverence towards trees. They learned of the the energies of the forest and powers and the, the trees used them in their magical observances. So if the druid even literally means like Oak Father or Oak Land, well there you have right there with the connection of the druids to the trees. Um, Both the Druids and the Elves have a similar tradition, with similar originating sources, um, and both seem to be devoted to the ways of forest magic. Um, I have often suggested that the Nemeton be created in woodland areas. Wizards have long been aware of the tremendous natural energy available within the forest. And when a practitioner repeatedly can, returns to the same forest locale uh, to perform magic, to raise energy, um, that place becomes charged. Becomes charged with energy. And place becomes one of power, embedded in nature's memory. It, uh, in time, it resembles that archetypal enchanted forest. Okay, and the second level, second degree of druidry is known as the ovate, or the ovid, and it's entirely dedicated to the understanding and use of forest magic, forest energy, energy of the trees. Probably one of the central points of tree magic using powers of forest energy would be the Agham, the Agam, an ancient system of runes, and although some have disputed this idea of connecting up with trees because, in, in truth, you know, the, uh, the Agam had so many different applications that trees being just one of them, but it's, it's something that we cannot ignore. Um, each runic symbol represents a particular tree and that representative current of energy. And uh, in eclectic non druidic systems, it's simply called the tree alphabet. Um, and modern revivalists have seen the place um, most of the attention on the oracular or divinatory value of the Agham. But the Celtic Agham actually has many purposes beyond divination. Um, it was almost a backbone seat to... It, it, it formulated the foundation of the uh, druidic natural magic system. Um, whether it was the omens of birds flying in the sky or um, patterns of sticks laying on the ground, um, the symbols found in nature could be related to Agam lore. And by that being also an alphabet, it was from this that we could almost come up with this idea of being able to literally read nature, read the signs of nature. Um, the runes can also be used for inscriptions, meditations, and even forms of spellcraft. Um, there's ways of using using them as a catalyst for tree communication. Um, so, uh, since, since trees are aligned with primarily the earth element and the earth as a planet, 
made me believe that tree magic is actually lunar oriented, which is not so. Um, it can be adapted to such. I mean, the word month means comes from moon, and at one point, although another controversial aspect, um, at one point we actually find um, that there is a tree calendar using species of of the the Ogham trees to represent months, times, uh, and the energies of the year. Uh, others have gone on to use them in full moon rituals and to incorporate the Celtic tree lore into uh, Wicca and so forth. So, many applications to be had. Um, the green world of the forest is dependent on the sun for growth, and although the polarity does seem darker, um, we can consider it a solar-oriented path, and as much as equally as the, the lunar orientations that we find. Uh, primarily, uh, trees can be seen as an integral part of the Earth-oriented systems, and they are all interconnected to form a link across the planet and as a whole form in themselves a vast living organism beneath the ground, rooting systems and all, all sharing uh, the planet together. So in spite of this, more of our forests disappear every day and it is for this reason that many druids step up to positions of ecological responsibility and environmental activism and so forth. So, tree magic, the obey grade, this gives you a little bit of an idea on where we're going to be headed from here.